Welcome back to the part 2 in the series of creating 2D platformers for Unity. In this video I will show you how to create an idle animation after rigging the character and how to make inverse kinematics works. In the last video we drew our character in Photoshop, then we used the PSD importer to import our character into Unity, which will auto layer the character as you layered it in Photoshop. But I noticed that there are a lot of mistakes regarding the layers, for example this axe can be shown behind the legs, also this hand is behind the right leg. Additionally, I didn't like the shape of the right hand because it's exactly the same as left hand and showing the inner side of the hand and I wanted to show the outer side of the hand. So let's go to Photoshop and fix those layer issues and get better hand to show the outer side of it. Drag the right hand to the top then drag the right axe beneath it then we need to drag the right leg and the right feet to be beneath the beard and finally we need to place the left feet under the left leg and above the left hand I thought it's better also to, to adjust the position and rotation of the hand the right hand and the right abs and now let's make the hand the right hand showing its outer side not its inner side because it's not it's now not logical just use the brush tool and select the same color as the same of the hand color and just to draw to remove the details of the hand save the file and back to unity now you'll notice weird results happen, but don't worry, just click on the sprite editor and manually adjust the slices to match the new position of the axe, also do the same for the right hand, then click apply, that will fix it. Now click on sprite editor menu and select skinning editor. Then click create bone and start drawing bones starting from the body. You can hide some sprites by clicking sprite and make the right axe and right hand invisible for a while while we draw the bones. Left click to start a bone chain and right click to stop it and start a new one and if you want to create a bone chain which is child of a parent bone just click on the parent bone first then start drawing a bone chain for example here click on the body bone then start drawing the right leg bone chain and it's highly recommended that you name your bones immediately while you draw them to keep things organized name the red bone body bone right leg, right feet, and left leg, left feet. Do the same for the left hand, left axe, and the right hand, right axe. Then you can create three separate bones to control the beard, if you wanna make like wind effect or when you jump or idling, do not make them fixed, which is not natural. And finally, create a bone to control the helmet. Now click on Auto Geometry and then Generate for All Visible to generate geometry for all our sprites. You'll see each sprite now is colored with many colors. They are the bone colors, which means the, the, the bones that influence each sprite. And if you start to move and rotate the bones, you will see that some sprites are moving correctly as expected while others feel so weird and stretching unwanted points. So let's fix those by clicking on Bone Influence. For example, let's check the right axe sprite. You will see it's 
affected by the right axe bone, the beard bone, the feet, and the right hand. So let's remove all the influences and just keep the right axe bone as influencer. That would fix this. We will apply the same method to all other sprites to make each sprite getting influenced by its correct bone only. For the right hand it's good to be influenced by the right axe and also by the right, right hand bone. Keep repeating the same process for all body parts. In case you face a situation where one sprite could be influenced by two different bones, you can control exactly how each bone influences that sprite using the weight brush. You can click on weight brush, then click on the desired bone, then new color. A specific portions of the sprite with that bone influence. Seems it wasn't a good idea to link the right beard and left beard to the middle beard bones. Instead I will delete them and relink them to the body bone. Then set the areas of influence for each of them manually. Click apply and we are now ready to add the inverse kinematics. Now go to the window menu and make sure to check from advanced menu the preview packages to see the 2D IK package, install that. Now click on binary lunar viking game object and add component IK manager 2D. We need to add IK solvers for each limb for the right leg and the left leg and also considering that for the right and left axis. So add a new limb solver and name it left leg solver. Then go to the bones, to the left leg, then to the left feet and create game object there to be as a child, name it left leg effector and make sure to move its position to the tip of the left leg then select the left leg solver and link the left leg effector to the effector field also create a target click create target and now as you can see you can move that effector and it will move the left leg and the left feet as real bones but since the joint is not correct, so we click on flip to flip the joint to move this left leg correctly. Repeat the same process for all other limbs. And now we are ready to animate our character. Click on Binary Lunar Viking, then go to the Animation tab. Click Create, then create a new folder named Animations. Then name our first animation, which will be the idol animation, Viking underscore idol. Hit record. With rigging the character correctly and doing the inverse kinematic, animating any character would be piece of cake. Let's move the legs to the ground to start doing the idol animation. We want also the axis to be lowered because the player is standing still. Now move the time in the timeline into something like half a second, 0.30. Then select the body bone and move that slightly down a bit. Then select the timeline at one second and copy all the keyframes from the beginning of the animation to the end of it. To create a continuous loop which gives a feeling of breathing also. Now let's move the hands and the axes a bit. Select the right axe. Now let's give the axes some movements. Go to the 0.30 at the timeline. Select the left axe, move it down a bit. Then select the right axe and move it up a bit. Again go to the 1 second at the timeline. 
then copy all the keyframes from 0 to 1 second. But now everything is moving at the same time, which is doesn't feel so natural, so let's delay the movement of the right axe a bit by clicking off the axe animation at 0 0.30 and moving it to 0 0.35 which will give more natural feeling for the movement also let's move the helmet down a bit at 0 0.30 don't forget again to copy all the keyframes from 0 to 1 second to get smooth nice animation nice smooth loop now let's rotate the middle beard to the left a bit, the right beard to the left a bit also, and the left beard to the right. And you can give them some variations during the time by moving the movement of the right beard for example to more than 0 0.30 to 0 0.35 and moving the middle beard movement to 0 0.25. And here you go, you did your first idle animation using the latest technologies from Unity by rigging the character using inverse kinematic and finally doing some nice smooth animation. In the next video we will be doing the running animation, climbing animation and jumping animation with some coding. So before you leave don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get notified about the next video. Also don't forget that all our Patreons will have access to download all our projects and experiments. I'm so glad that Binary Lunar hit 100 subscribers within less than 2 months and only with 5 videos till now. I wish you a very happy new year, filled with happiness and awesome projects. Till next video, see you next year.